In this example, we're dealing with hypothesis testing for the population proportion P. Now, some sources will use the symbol pi to represent the population proportion. Now, I know perhaps that's more consistent with the idea that Greek letters tend to be the population parameters. But I've just seen too many sources use lowercase p, and you know what? There's safety in numbers, so I'm going to use lowercase p. Now, we learn by doing in this video series, so here's a question for you. Gigi's Pizza regularly surveys its customers, and on the basis of these surveys, management of the chain claims that at least 75% of its customers rate the food as excellent. So then we've got some kind of testing service that asks 460 customers to rate the food, and it seems that 71% rated the food as excellent. So the question is, is there enough evidence at the 5% and then also the 1% level of significance to reject this claim? Feel free to pause the video and give this a go yourself and see if we match up on answers here. But I'm gonna jump straight to my five step method for answering these questions. Step one is to state the null and alternate hypotheses. And my rule here, as always, is to think whatever we're seeking evidence for needs to go into the alternate hypothesis. So this is the important part of the quote. Is there enough evidence at the 1% level of significance to reject management's claim? So we're going to try to show that the population proportion is less than 0.75. I'm considering we're seeking evidence for that. That goes in our alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis, if you want to be safe, you can just write that it's equal to 0.75. But again, I appreciate some people like writing the exact converse of what's written in the alternate hypothesis. So instead of writing P equals 0.75 in our null hypothesis here, we can write P is greater than or equal to 0.75. But it's the same thing. We're basically holding the claim on its merits and we're going to test it to see if there's evidence to reject it. All right, so we've got a sample proportion of 71%, that's 0.71. So realistically, as always, this hypothesis is going to test whether this is far enough away from 0.75 for us to reject it. Now we know that if it's close to 0.75, we might just be able to say, look, we've got a small sample and perhaps that sample of people just happened to be less likely to enjoy the food for some reason. But beyond a certain point, the fact that the difference could come down to random variation becomes less likely. So is this 0.71 far enough away from 0.75 to cast doubt on that hypothesis? So the next step then is to calculate our test statistics. And we've got three important pieces of information we can grab from the question. P hat, which is our sample proportion, was 0.71. P, the population proportion, is 0.75. And N is 460. That's the number of observations we have. So I guess my first question is, what is the underlying distribution for this proportion? Well, if you've been watching any of my other videos, you might know that the underlying distribution is actually something called a Bernoulli distribution or a binomial distribution in its aggregated form. In other words, it's a distribution built up on binary data. Each individual person either does or doesn't think the food was excellent. So what possible test statistic can we use here? Well, this is where the central limit theorem helps us out. We know that as our sample size increases, the distribution of the sample mean or sample statistic becomes very much like a normal distribution, irrespective of the underlying distribution, which in this case is binomial. And there's a rule of thumb when you're dealing with binomial distributions, and that's that when n times p and n times 1 minus p are both greater than 5, we can say that n is sufficiently large for the test statistic to be approximately normal, enough so that we can use our z distribution. So it just means that this calculation here, where we get our sample value minus the sample mean divided by the standard deviation of our binomial test statistic, 
Now, for a binomial test stat, the standard deviation is the square root of p times 1 minus p on n. That's going to be distributed approximately normally, which makes things real easy for us. So we can call this z in this case. And when we put all this information in, 0.71 minus 0.75 and all that stuff, we can get out a z value of minus 1.981. So that gives us some kind of quantitative measure of how extreme our sample is given the null hypothesis is true. And the larger the magnitude of this value of z, the more likely we are to reject that null hypothesis. So what we can do now is determine our decision rule, and this will figure out what region in which we will reject our null hypothesis. And for a 5% level of significance, that's the first one, we're going to have 5% in this lower tail. So we're going to be rejecting the null hypothesis if it's this far out from the expected value, which is zero in this case, for our test statistic. Now be aware that this is a one-tailed test because our alternate hypothesis goes in one direction only. We're only going to reject this null hypothesis if it's significantly less than the value that's hypothesized. If it was a two-tailed test, we'd need to split this 5% up into two even lots of 2.5% at either extreme. But thankfully, we don't need to do that here. And to find this critical value, you can use the Excel function equals norm.s.inv, and we're using 0.05 for that, because that's the CDF, the cumulative distribution function that's required in here. So the fact that we were after the point below which lies 0.05 means we put 0.05 in this formula and we get minus 1.645. So the 5% level of significance will reject the null hypothesis if our z value turns out to be less than minus 1.645. And what happens at the 1% level of significance? Well, it's just a 1% area now in this lower tail. So we're being more strict with our null hypothesis. We'll only reject it if it's this extreme our sample proportion, that is. And using the same Excel formula, you can find it's minus 2.33. So we'll, re we'll reject this null hypothesis if Z's that far down for a 1% level of significance. So just to summarize then, our decision rules for the 5% and 1% level of significance, respectively, is to reject if our Z value is less than negative 1.645 for the 5%, and reject if it's less than negative 2.33 for the 1% level of significance. And look, we've already calculated our Z value. We can kind of see what's gonna happen here, but I won't ruin the surprise for you. And perhaps before we get there, it might be good to calculate a P value. And for all of these videos I've been putting together for hypothesis testing, I've made sure to calculate the P value each time. And in this case, you'll get a sense for why it's quite useful. Now you'll notice we just had to calculate two individual decision rules for each of those tests we wanted to make. But if we're just calculating a p-value here, which is the probability of getting a sample as extreme as ours or more extreme, given the null hypothesis is true, we only really need to calculate one p-value. And that uses the norm.s.dist function in Excel. So when we put our calculated value of z in there, and we make sure we write true in the second argument here because we're after the cumulative distribution function, the area below that value. We get a p-value of 0.0238. Now this will effectively tell us which levels of significance we will be rejecting this null hypothesis for. Because you know that if the p-value is less than your level of significance, you reject the null hypothesis, right? So because this is less than 0.05, we'll reject the null hypothesis at 5%. But because it's greater than 0.01, we won't reject it at a 1% level of significance. So here's our rejection decision for the 5% level of significance. We can either say we reject the null hypothesis as the Z value is less than negative 1.645, or we can say we reject it because the P value is less than 0.05. And here are the values that we got. Now for a 1% level of significance, we can see that we don't reject the null hypothesis. Using the z value, you can see that our value was slightly higher than that critical point below which we'd reject. Or similarly, the p value 
was greater than 0.01. So these will always agree with each other. And in this case, it's no exception. So our conclusion then is that there's enough evidence at the 5% level of significance, but not at the 1% level, to suggest that the proportion of customers rating Gigi's food as excellent is less than 75%. So who knows? Maybe they should become a vegan restaurant and see if that improves people's opinion. But there you have it. There is testing for the population proportion P.